Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is gonna be my Fear the Walking Dead finale video. I, I feel like there was a big rally at the end. Like they were just saving all the best stuff. So season one, yeah, developed kind of slowly, but I feel like season two is gonna be a lot more exciting. I think the episode did an awesome job about addressing some of the complaints about the Travis character. And just to actually start out by answering a couple of season two questions. I know everyone kind of wonders what's going on. They've already confirmed it, like it got picked up for season two a long time ago. There's gonna be 15 episodes. They don't know when it's gonna air exactly, just sometime in 2016. And the, the airplane web show, like the, the extra web show that they've been posting, they're gonna post new episodes of that weekly during Walking Dead season six, during commercial breaks. It, it's only gonna be like a minute per episode, so it's gonna be way smaller than I thought it was gonna be. But one of those characters will be on Fear the Walking Dead season two. It's all about a walker outbreak happening on an airplane, so cue all your snakes on a plane posts. But careful for spoilers from the Fear of the Walking Dead finale as we get into it, starting with top 5 WTF moments. A new round of the giveaway starts now. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. Number 5. Travis lets Ophelia's boyfriend go because it's the right thing to do. It's the thing the good man would do. And Daniel has the line later in the episode which kind of tags that where he says, See what doing the good thing gets you. So by that measure, if killing Liza at the end was also the good thing, see what that gets him. It'll be interesting to see how that informs his character in season two, like if that's going to haunt him and, and cause some more problems. The takeaway is that doing the good thing in this mad world as Strand calls it will get you nowhere. It's going to expose you to unforeseen consequences down the road. But if you've been watching the main show, you know that's not the whole story. You know, just because you might not be able to do the good thing doesn't mean you can't do the right thing. Like at least for a little while during season five, Rick started doing the right thing and being really cautious. I mean, the question now is, is, is he going overboard? But just looking at the spectrum of characters, starting from, you know, really good to kind of evil seeming, you have Travis the good man at one end, you have Daniel who's kind of in the middle, like he's not afraid to do the right thing, and at the other end you have Strand, who seems like there might be something going on with him that we don't know about, something bad. Speaking of which, on a number four, Strand is the new Shane. You aren't useful right now? Sorry, gotta go. Kill me. Well, you're already on your way. You can keep the watch. He's protectful of Nick as they're like, they're slowly escaping, but that's only because he needs Nick. He's not doing it out of the kindness of his heart or anything like that. Strand right now is like one of the most interesting characters. He's going to be really awesome to watch in season two. Let me know if he's your favorite new character right now, but on Talking Dead, on, on the after show, Cliff Curtis said that Travis doesn't trust him at all. He's way too confident, just something nuts about him. Something is totally off. And he, he would rather take Daniel any day over Strand. Daniel's a little bit more honest about who he is. He's a little bit more realistic. I mean, what he says sounds kind of dire, like it's too late to help these people, but he's not malicious about it in the way that Strand is. Speaking of Daniel, on to number three. Daniel zergs the military with the super pack from the stadium. Just, just one of the best casual Walker reveals ever. That reveal was probably the funniest moment in the episode, in an episode that's not necessarily meant to be funny. I mean, it, it's pretty gritty drama, so you don't find a lot of humor in things, but this was funny. You might want to save those bullets. And he just, he casually walks away. I let Lestrand had the line too, like they figured it out. Don't worry, they're slow. But they open fire in the super pack and the camera pans up and you see it's, it's like the super pack from season four. It just goes on and on and on. I think they said there were about 2,000 of them in that stadium, but there might be more that have just added on as they walked down the street. Daniel was pretty awesome in this episode. He, I don't think he was the biggest MVP, but this was definitely his high point. And what do you think about the way that he took it when Liza told him what happened to his wife? She, she didn't say, I killed her, but she did tell him they were, they were dead. Ophelia's reaction felt pretty authentic. Like, of course they're going to be upset. Uh, Daniel kind of accepts it though. I think in the instant that Liza told him what happened, he, he kind of realized, yeah, I mean, it was really bad. And seeing everything that had happened, everything that was going on around them, he was able to connect the dots and, and sense that there probably wasn't going to be anything they could do to help her. And because Liza died at the end, I don't think that Daniel is going to be too pissed off at the other characters about his wife's death next season. I think it's going to haunt him, but I, I don't think that he's going to take it out on the rest of the group. On the number two, Ophelia's boyfriend tries to kill Daniel, shoots Ophelia when she tries to stop him, and then Travis takes him down and just wails on him. I don't think it had quite the energy of Rick beating Pete, like the stakes hadn't risen that high yet, but it, it was kind of that, he was kind of invoking that energy. Like that was the breaking point. The good man, Travis, kind of died a little bit inside. The good Travis was total walker bait, so be glad that he died. I mean, he's also a lot more fun now, now that he's kind of opened up. Speaking of which, on my number one WTF moment, pretty obvious here, Travis kills Liza. And I like that she didn't ask him verbally. They just, they, they kind of shared that look and knew what needed to happen. 
Don't forget too that before he walked up on her and Madison, Madison was ready to do it too. I think it's evidence that all those characters are strong. Like even Chris, who's kind of at the, at the bottom of the barrel in terms of strength, stood up for Alicia whenever those soldiers got super rapey. But I think if you were to rank the performances from the characters, like in terms of like who was the strongest in the episode, who was maybe not so strong, I would say that Liza is at the top. She, she was definitely the strongest because she had the courage to know that she needed to die. And two, Madison didn't argue with her about it. Like she didn't break down. And then three, Travis was actually able to do it. Daniel's still a strong character, but his performance last week when he was torturing the soldier, that was much more powerful than he was this week. Let me know though, what do you think about the characters using that boat next season? We must always stay in constant motion. We can't stay here. I, I think that just implies that they're going to be along the coastline. You know, I mean, obviously the show is going to be filming in Vancouver, so we will see them walking around on land. It'd be weird to have them only on a boat all the time. There'd be no show. All in all, it was a great series. It was a bit of a slow burn. I, I think a lot of the complaints are that people just wanted it to move at the same pace and have the same energy is the main show. And yeah, they're working up to that, but you can kind of see how they're trying to differentiate it. They don't want to make two versions of the exact same show. That's why I think they chose California. I mean, they said that specifically they wanted that last shot on the Pacific. So obviously that's something that you were never going to see with the Atlanta-based characters, and even now that they're in Washington, D.C. So here's what's going on with the main show. Next week starts with episode one. Remember, it's just, it's just like it is every single season. It's going to be 16 episodes. It's going to be pretty crazy. I definitely think that some of the new characters are going to be kind of shady. So very excited about evil Ethan Embry. Lots of really awesome stuff happening this week. Shows coming back, Flash, Arrow, whole bunch of stuff. And next week, season six, while you guys wait for everything to post, you can click here to learn all about Rob Stark's will in A Game of Thrones. People have been asking me all about Rob Stark's will. And you can click here for all my other Walking Dead videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It's High Five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.